So this is one of my dad's old trucks. It's a 1937 Diamond T. Um, pretty rare truck. In fact, very rare truck. He had a bit of an incident uh, pulling it off of his trailer. He was taking it to a truck show and pulled it off of his trailer um, and fell off the ramp. And that, the ramp hit down here on the bottom of the fender and pushed it up and it it ripped ripped the fender right through here um there's a mount underneath anyways it ripped the fender right through here and uh we spent some time getting it all straightened out and welded welded it back together ground down the welds and then put some filler on it very I mean, it's a lot of filler right now, but it's very little filler that will actually be on it. Um, uh, once I get this all sanded down. Anyways, I'll, uh, I got some 220 grit in, in the air file. Um, I'll work on this. But I'm Okay, so you'll notice that I got most of it sanded pretty flat. I can feel, you know what, I, I'm pretty sure I sanded too much out of this area. Um, so I'll put a little bit more in there. That's kind of where Dent was at that we couldn't get all the way out. You'll notice I was sanding with the block here and the block it you, know, you want to sand with a block so you keep the planes the same but uh, the block wasn't getting in here so I know that this area is a little low and this area is a little low so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mix up a little bit more and I'll get I'll get that filled put a little bit more in here where I took too much off and then uh, there a little bit Okay, so I got a little bit of filler. I'm gonna mix up, fill those low spots. Um, then once I get the low spots filled, I'm going to uh, obviously let this cure, uh, sand it again, and then I've got some glaze that I'll finish it off with. I'll get any pinholes or any, any small things that need to be addressed taken care of with the glaze. When you mix this putty, you gotta work fast, but the, you gotta get it all the same color um, so you know it's mixed well. And uh, put it on thin. It's always easier to sand more off though, so you wanna put plenty on, but uh, you don't, you don't wanna set, you don't wanna get it too thick to where you're sanding. That's about it. There's, I think those are the low spots I needed to address. Uh, maybe a little bit right there. And then, like I say, you gotta work real quick. This stuff sets up in a hurry. So, I'll get this, then we'll sand it again. And we'll see where, see where we're at. See how it's dragging lines? That's because I'm still screwing with it while it's setting up. So it's hard to know when to stop. It's one of my character flaws. Um, but uh, I certainly am working this too long. So I'll stop, I'll walk away. That's the hardest thing to do sometimes, is just walk away. Uh, 
All right, so after all that work, I used some paint that had been sitting around for 20 years, 20 plus years since my dad restored this truck. And the paint, either the UV that was on the, the fender um, over the past 20 something years or the paint in the can, uh, there's a difference of color. You can't get it to blend just right. So instead of masking off the entire fender and painting the entire fender, I'm going to pull the fender off and we'll, we'll finish sanding it, fix some uh, rock chips and all kinds of stuff that's happened over the past 20 something years and paint it and let it cure and Put it back on there. So we should be expecting a visit from the old man soon. Uh, he, he'll be out here to supervise for sure, tell me what I'm doing wrong. So I'll start taking this fender off and we'll see him soon, I'm sure. Start with the wiring on the lights, get that pulled out of here. The old man put a term strip in here when he Restored this, so that's good. I'll just disconnect the the wiring on this term strip so I can pull the this headlight off and uh, the fog light. So I got to pull the headlight off, uh, disconnect this fog light wiring. It's routed up through here. And then uh, this bumper bracket is bolted to the frame back in there. I'll take the bolts off, then that slides out. And then there's about, I don't know, 15 quarter inch bolts that hold this on. I'll get those all off and then we'll pull it off. He was pretty bummed out when he smashed the fender. Um, but we'll get it fixed. The body, the body repair turned out really nice. The paint just didn't blend. It's trying to get, trying to get the paint blended instead of just repainting the whole fender. But we'll get it repainted. And if it doesn't match the other fender good enough, we'll pull that fender off and repaint that fender. It'll be super exciting. These, these, the, all three of these are studs. Were, were these holes, were, were these holes supposed to line up with those? They're exactly the same. Yeah, I just used, I, I. That mount is off a 39 Ford cab over. Yeah. So, the and they, they go like, like that. that. Yeah, just like that. So we wouldn't have to patch the lower hole. No, the hole's covered. So yeah. what we'd have to do is clean up the headlights and paint them. Yeah. But I've got to find them. I don't know where they are. They're upstairs. I'll go grab them. But I found the truck was together for two or three years, and I stumbled onto a pair of original headlights on eBay. Yeah. And they were the bid was I had there was like three or four days left on the bid. Yeah. And and they were bid like fifteen dollars or something. Yeah. This is before Diamond Tees were sold at Barrett Jackson for sixty or eighty. Or a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. But after that, the, the price of diamond tea went crazy. Everything diamond tea is crazy. Hey, might as well put them on if you got them. 
Is that like a cast piece on the end of the frame? Yes. Huh. Test them. Well, these things were built like tanks, Dave. They really were. this stuff together you had to build all this everything in here to make this engine work in this truck so pretty cool history he also put the transmission out of that truck in there he built these running boards out of bleachers now that you look at them I'm sure you've your butt's been sore sitting on those before but the rear end that's in this is original 1937 Diamond T rear end. So, but you know, it's got a super long drive shaft, carrier bearing in it. The frame, the frame's all original Diamond T stuff. Check out the back of this frame. It's actually got a, this Diamond T cutout, it's original. I, I don't even know how they would have cut that. I guess it would have been stamped. But that's original to 1937 on the cross member of the back of the truck. Pretty cool old truck. Looks pretty cool. He loves this truck. Takes it all over the country to these truck shows. But check out the dash in this thing. Isn't that pretty? It's got the, I guess the custom, the custom cab came with that banjo steering. And then also this custom cab is apparently about six inches longer on the back here. That was the, the custom cab. So the, the regular cabs would have been, a, the back of it would have been about right there. I guess they're about four inches longer, but the back of it would have been about right here, which I don't even know how you would get in there to drive it. I couldn't get in it if it was that that small. And I'm only six feet tall, so check out all the cool finish on this thing. So those those hood latches would have been original. He had those re-chromed. That uh, this I believe is stainless. That was original to it. Those cool uh, emblems. That's all original stuff. And then that hood, hood ornament, that's all original. Look at that grill. Isn't that pretty? These headlights, he was just talking about that, but these headlights are off of, I think, a 39 Ford. Um, apparently he found, after he had this put together, he found period correct headlights for this truck so now that we've got the fender all ripped apart um he's found the ambition to uh maybe put those on here so we're going to pull those out of storage and take a look at them and see what it's going to take to put those on
Ja. So I'm going to sand these fenders for three reasons. Uh, biggest reason is so the paint that we're going to put on it has some texture to bite to. Second reason is to get rid of some of these runs that have been on it for 20 plus years. And then uh, the last reason is to get any, uh, any of this paint that's the different colors get that all blended it feels super smooth but I, it, it when you paint with uh, shiny new paint any kind of difference of texture will show through so I'm going to start with 320 um, to get rid of these runs and then I'll, I'll do the rest of the fender with uh, some 600 grit, get it nice and smooth, get rid of some of this orange peel that's been on there since it was painted. Well, there's one fender sanded. I did have to put some metal etching primer on it. So I have to sand those spots again. Because um, I sanded through to the bare metal. Of course, we got to wipe them down with grease and wax remover and paint them. specks of dust that's to be expected if you're not painting in a, in a booth but if it bugs us enough we can buff them out I'll let these cure for a few days and then we'll put them back on the truck get the truck put back together well we got these all painted it turned out pretty nice huh yeah, they turned out pretty nice. I'm really not looking forward to installing them, though. Hey, we should do that one magic trick. Okay.